Hey students, this is Mr. Ravenscroft, and I would like to teach you how to do multiplication and division with exponents. And if you're on IXL, uh, this is topic F10 in the eighth grade learning area, uh, shortcut L2J. And before we discuss this, I want to show you an actually a problem that's much easier to understand because it's smaller numbers, easier to expand out. So here we go. Example one. So the big idea with this topic is we're going to see numbers that are repeated, uh, same base. So imagine we have 3 to the 4th dot 3 to the 2nd over 3 to the, let's say, 3rd. And we're supposed to simplify this. So if you've already learned how to do uh, multiplication with exponents, we know we can expand this out. And if you expand this out, expand your exponents, we know that the first thing, 3 to the 4th, simply means you have four of what's below. You have four of these three. So you could expand that out, three dot three dot three dot three. And then the next thing, we'll put a little dot here, okay? Three to the second means you have dot, okay, three more twos, okay? So you don't have to memorize a thing on these problems. You just got to conceptualize what you're looking at. Let me use a new color there. So imagine we have three of the threes on the bottom of the fraction. Now, do I expand these out every time in my mind? Not usually, but what I definitely do is I picture them out just enough and so that I know with confidence what my shortcuts are, my patterns are, okay? I don't memorize them. I don't worry about forgetting them every day when I wake up. I just know I can rediscovering them by picturing them out if I need to. But once you picture them out, you suddenly go, wait a second, the four and the two, that just tells you how many are there and you're picturing them. And you go, yeah, you would just add the four and the two and you would get three to the sixth. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the bottom. And then you picture the six threes on top and the three of them on the bottom. You'd say, okay, then I'm going to cancel some of these out because these reduce down to one. And so in a way, it's like you're subtracting the six and the three and you say, yeah, there would be about three that cancel on the bottom and three that cancel on the top that will leave you with just 3 to the third up top. So that would be my final answer for this problem. Now, of course, for the problems we're going to give you, we're going to make them so ugly on this topic in IXL that you basically don't want to work it out by hand. We want you to actually use some shortcuts. So let's take a look at your actual problems. Here we go. Hey, in this first problem, we have 432 to the ninth and 432 to the fourth. So only multiplication happening right now. Just a quick review to make, they're checking to see if we understand the basics. So on this problem, 432. Okay, if there's nine of them, then there's four more of them. We would just want to add how many there are. And so we just take the exponents and add them. We'd say, okay, there's really just, you know, 13. Nine plus four is 13. There'd be 13 of these 432s being multiplied or being connected with dots. Let's try another one that actually has the um, multiplication and division at the same time. Actually, just real quick here, with division, we'd want to picture, uh, make sure they make sure we have division down. So we picture those out, we cancel out about eight of them, and we'd say, okay, there's one left, and make sure you know where it's at. It'd be on the bottom, yeah, 709 to the first power on the bottom, because eight of them cancel. There'd be no more left on top. There'd be one left. If I subtract eight from nine, there'd be one left on the bottom. It's just one over that. Okay, let's go to our harder problem now that has both. Okay, on this problem, we actually need to express our answer using positive exponents. And that is actually a method, you know, making the exponents positive that I would recommend using all the time. Uh, if you're someone that really comprehends the subtraction method with exponents when you're dividing, you can do that. Um, but I've just seen so many thousands of students do that method and it just has up and down success. So I'd recommend just making all the exponents positives. Let's give it a shot right here. If you don't know this concept, just jump back one video to multiplication with exponents. Uh, that video of mine will actually explain what I'm about ready to do here, which is make this negative exponent positive. So here's the big idea. We know that exponents are just like repeated multiplication, but when they're opposite, when the exponents got an opposite symbol, aka a negative, this is just a sign that we got to do the opposite. It actually means we repeatedly divide. 
And what we discovered in that video is that you could summarize it this way. It's as if these, this 1709 is homesick. It's as if he's negative. He's not, he's not happy. There's still one of him, but he's not happy. If you've ever been homesick before, maybe it's more like that for you. You've been sad or you've been homesick. You know you can feel negative. And this was just a way to kind of package the big idea. And what we could say is that any bases that have a negative exponent, any numbers that have a negative exponent, they're sad. They're not where they belong. And we need to move them where they belong. Where do they belong? The other side of the fraction, right? So if they're on the bottom, they go to the top. So that would mean if we move them up here to the top, he'd say, oh, finally, I'm home. And he would feel much, much better, right? So you move them to the top. Now his uh, exponent is positive. He's happy, okay? And then you can go simplify what's left over. Okay, picture this. You have 8,709s. I'm not going to write those out. Dot, one more 709. Wouldn't you have about 80 plus 1? Take those two exponents and add them. You'd have 709 to the 81st power. Okay, so there's our first problem dealing with division and a negative exponent. Let's look for an even harder one here. I like this problem right here. It actually has a variety of exponents, three different ones. Let me just give you a tip right now. Think of this all as a fraction and circle the ones that are negative exponents, that are homesick, okay, that aren't where they belong. Uh, so this one needs to move down, this one needs to move down. The other one can just stay, right? This one, we'll put it in blue here. This has a positive exponent. He's happy. He's where he belongs. So I would just take him and rewrite him at the top of the fraction. But these orange ones, these ones both had negative exponents, so that one's going to get moved to the bottom. He'll become to the positive one. Okay, this one's going to get moved to the bottom. That'd be 198 to the positive one. And now everything has a positive exponent. So now you can start talking about what reduces because everything is where it officially belongs. So let's reduce things. I see one pair of 198s. You know, any number divided by itself reduces to one. So these would cancel. All I'd have left on the top is a one. On the bottom, I still have one, a 198. So let's type that one in and see if there isn't maybe one last harder problem. All right, 1 over 198. Let's look for a harder one here. Okay, so to wrap up, here's one last problem that almost looks so easy that it's hard, but um, let's think about this for a second. You have three of these 240s on top, but they are negative. So if they're negative, we can confidently say we need to circle those and move those to where they belong. We need to move them to their home. They're not where they belong. Uh, the other ones, the 240 to the 22nd power, they're fine, right? They're, they're positive. Positive 22, that's where they belong. There's 22 of those 240s. They're on the bottom of the fraction, which means they're kind of like dividing. These ones need to go down, though. So if we rewrote this, we would say we have 240 to the 22nd. It's staying there. On the top of the fraction, nothing's going to be left. These are going to get moved down to the bottom. So we're going to have 240 to the positive 3. And now we just simplify things. Can you imagine 22 of these 240s dot three more of them? How many of them would you have? Wouldn't you have, let's see, 22 plus 3, you'd have about 25 of those. So you'd say I have 240 to the 25th power. All right, students, good job listening in. Why don't you guys go give it a shot? Let me know if you have questions. And I hope you guys feel a whole lot more peace about this topic, which can be so tricky at times for students. All right. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.